stop on our Benelux tour. Only we're starting in the ne part. Netherlands ho! Ready to adventure with us to Amsterdam? In this episode, we roam the canals, the windmills, even the house of a dead artist. Gross. Eating and drinking our way through the city's many delicacies. Will Yuri find good beer? Stay tuned. This is sort of cheating because uh, our trip this time is actually to Amsterdam, Bruges, and Luxembourg, and we're starting you in Heathrow. But as many trips go, we have a layover here. So we came in from LAX, we're in Heathrow, we're about to get on a flight to uh, Amsterdam to start. I've never been to any of these places before, so let's experience it together. And so we find ourselves in the center of Amsterdam, surrounded by beautiful architecture and a bevy of delights. What will we do first? So for our first day in Amsterdam, we're capitalizing on the museum tour. You'll see behind me there's the giant Rijks Museum, which is one of the most famous museums here in Amsterdam. And then now we're on our way to the Van Gogh Museum, and then we're going to go to the Rembrandt House. So let's go. So we're at the Van Gogh Museum, uh, about to see hopefully some of the greatest uh, works of art we've ever seen. We say that when we go into every museum. Um, if you've ever seen, you know, certain seasons of Doctor Who too, this, this, this could be a very important uh, moment for us to, to be uh, to communing with, with Van Gogh. Unfortunately, there's no photography or filming allowed inside the museum, so you'll have to take our word for it. It was amazing. But look how beautiful the city is outside. I just can't get enough of this architecture. More on that later. But let's start at Vondel Park, where Tara got a little lost. On purpose. In a city with so much to see, luckily there are many ways to get around. Mostly, it seems, by bicycle. So we're at Fibo, which is like an automated self-serve food place. I'm going to get some change so we can buy food. is Magnum. They make, I think, the most ubiquitous uh, ice cream bars in all of Europe. We've had them all over our travels. Uh, but what we've never seen is actually a Magnum store where they will actually dip the ice cream bar in whatever you want and then roll it in whatever they have. How could we pass that up? So let's not. Just on the red carpet, eating a Magnum bar that I, I created. No big deal. Should we get another one? After refueling, we decided to take a trip to one of Amsterdam's highlights, the Tulip Market, where we also found an abundance of cheese shops.
But eating cheese is hard work. We needed a snack. What goes good with cheese? Welcome to the Rembrandt Museum. Well, not exactly. It's the Rembrandt's house museum. The aforementioned Rieks Museum has most of his famous paintings, but the line was long, so we decided to come here to see where the master created his masterpieces and to get a glimpse of the everyday life of a not-so-everyday artist. We were even given a tour of Rembrandt's studio, which came complete with a demonstration of how he created prints of his copper etchings. On the tour, we learned that Rembrandt used his own house as a gallery for his work, where prospective buyers could come and browse his wares. Pretty good use of space, if you ask me. I guess if you love what you do, it's nice to be surrounded by- Whoa! What is that? I guess it's good to have inspiration? But back to the art. It was pretty amazing to see how he created his own pigments and the variety of materials he combined to make paint. Especially if you think nowadays how easy it is just to go to the art store and buy the paint you want. An adventurer's trip to Amsterdam is not complete without a tour of the famous red light district, or as the French would label it more bluntly, Le Quartier Putain. Interestingly, the tour assembled near de Oudekerk, or Old Church, near the heart of the Red Light District. Perhaps more interestingly, we chose a tour run by former sex workers, organized by the Prostitution Information Center, a charitable foundation that champions the rights of sex workers, and informs the public about the social conditions of working in the sex industry. And she's buying a stairway to heaven. Yuri, stop! Didn't you see the sign? No stairway. I mean... No filming during the Red Light District tour. So we're just about to go on our tour of the Red Light District. Uh, we're actually going to the sex workers' uh, office to where they do a tour once a week uh, at 5 p.m. on Saturday. But before we did the tour of the Red Light District, we figured we should probably spend some time at church. So we just went around the Udekerk, which is the old church, which is right in the middle of the Red Light District. You can hear it's the red light district. Wow, I wish you could see what I was, what I'm seeing right now. Um, but so we decided to sit down for a little piece of cake and some tea, and then we'll be off. So just imagine us walking through the red light district, trying not to feel awkward as we pass windows with naked women beckoning to us from behind the glass. We needed a snack. After a long day, we get to sit down and sample some local delicacies. By delicacies, I mean treats. We've got some so this uh, split pea soup, which looks really hot. I'm gonna try not to burn myself on camera. That's delicious. And we got this hache or hake or hachi. I'm not exactly sure. It's dessert time. I mean. Let's be honest, it's always dessert time. Um, but this is apparently a Dutch thing. It's pofertjes. I pronounce, I'm sure I've butchered, I'm sure we butchered every Dutch word today. We're gonna put a little uh, powdered sugar on it. Do like maybe mini pancakes, maybe? It's just like a little pancake ball. Don't get me wrong, that's awesome. But it's just a pancake ball. 
Well, we've had a nice long day walking around Amsterdam. We saw a whole bunch of stuff, so we figured we'd uh, we'd come back home and take a load off. But first, we stopped off and we picked up a muffin. Oh, wait. This muffin came with special instructions. I've never had a muffin with special instructions before. Some notions when you eat special cake. Oh, it's special. Don't eat special cake if you have used alcohol. Well, luckily, Heineken sucks, so I haven't. And Tara doesn't drink. If you are not experienced, what experience like Jimi Hendry experienced? Take first only half a portion and wait at least one hour before you take any more. I've eaten bigger muffins than that in smaller amounts of time. Bear in mind it can take 45 minutes to an hour and a half until you notice the effect. The effect of feeling fat from eating a muffin. If you haven't had a meal, the effect will be quicker and stronger. Well, I've had a meal, so I already feel fat. If you don't feel well, don't panic. Muffins are good. Try to drink something sweet like orange juice or AA energy drink. It will help you feel better. Okay. So calm down, try to find a quiet place, and wait until it's over in an hour or so. There is absolutely no need to call the medics. They must not really trust in their muffins if they think I'm going to need a medic after eating a muffin. Okay, so back to reality. The next day, we decided to take a trip out of the city to see some of Holland's famed windmills in the neighborhood of Zanschanz, the gateway to which is a biscuit and chocolate factory museum. Mmm, I just wish they had sold fizzy lifting drinks. As you can probably see behind me, we came out to Zan Shans today to see the traditional windmills and get a little bit more taste of Dutch history. Sure, windmills are cool from the outside, but the real magic happens inside where we learn that each windmill harnesses the power of the wind to perform its own specific job, whether it's grinding wheat into flour or pressing seeds to extract oil. The mechanism of the mill is an impressive series of gears that were hypnotic to watch. We even found a windmill that was a sawmill. How is that possible? Make up your mind, mill. Oh, great. Now I want a mind mill. Hot chocolate from scratch? Yes, please.
To cheer Yuri up, we decided to wander through the quaint traditional Dutch houses scattered about the area, still lived in after hundreds of years, where we discovered a cheese shop, a clog workshop, and then we found exactly what the doctor ordered, a clock museum, where Yuri could quench his thirst for timepieces, like we hadn't gotten enough gears already. Hickory Dickory Dock. Yuri found a house full of clocks. The clocks struck one, we had some fun, and then we went out for a snack. At, uh, a s- snack. A snack. At the aforementioned clog shop and museum, we were treated to a history of the world-renowned Dutch wooden clog. On our way to a clog-making demonstration, we marveled at the footwear, some simple and utilitarian, and some a little fancier. Okay, a lot fancier. Black tie clog affair, anyone? My favorite part of the demonstration, besides the mad scientist clog maker, was the old-timey shoe Xerox machine, in which a finished shoe is placed on one side as a guide, and an unfinished block of wood is placed on the other. Last little trim, and voila! Why is he sniffing the shoe? He's not. He's puffing it. And that's less weird? I need a drink. Remember when I said we'd get back to the architecture? Well, I was fascinated that many of the buildings leaned markedly forward, to a shocking degree. I wondered if it was the result of the foundation eroding over time, but it's no accident. Our tour guide explained that many of the traditional multi-story buildings used a pulley mounted on the front of the building to hoist large items like furniture and goods up to the upper floors, and leaning the building out kept them from bumping into the facade on the way up. Neato. But wait! It's been too long without a snack. Let us have a moment of silence. Or rather, cheese. Sweet dreams are made of cheese. Who am I to disagree? I cheddar the world and the feta cheese. Everybody's looking for Stilton. I'm fired, aren't I? So one of the things that was recommended to us when we come to Amsterdam was to go for Indonesian food. I guess Indonesian food is to Amsterdam the way Indian food is to London. And uh, I guess the specialty is called Ristafo, which means rice tower. I don't know exactly where the tower, or that, well, there is, there is rice, so we've got that going for us. But it's a, a cornucopia of Indonesian delights, much like how the Koreans put a bunch of stuff out on. And now we get to eat it.
We'd be remiss if we didn't take a tour of the city's canals the only way you truly can, by boat. As we headed out into the open water, we were treated to a water taxi ballet before being stunned by a science museum that looks like a whale. Take a good look. This is the view through the most bridges at the same time from the canal. Seven bridges at once. So we're in the, much in, in classic form, uh, for me I had to find the brewery, the most interesting brewery where we were going. So we're in Amsterdam and there may be other breweries, but this is the brewery de Prau, which I'm sure I'm butchering. Um, but apparently it's known for, it's, it's in the old quarter, it's in the red light district, uh, right near the old, old church, the Udekek. And, um, and I think, as I understand it, everybody who works here was a former sex worker or an addict um, of some kind. So, uh, and this is where they, they can come and get jobs uh, when they're trying to get out of it or, uh, or they're on the mend. So I'm gonna try the, the triple, uh, which has gotta be a sight better than the beers that I've had here in, uh, in Amsterdam so far. And it is. That's very nice. Cheers, Amsterdam. But man cannot live on beer alone. And luckily the soup and sandwiches were on par with my beverage. We hate to do it, but it's time to wrap up our trip to the netherworld. I mean, Netherlands. With one last look at the beautiful cityscape and canals, we headed to the station to hop a train to Belgium. Won't you join us in the next episode of Up, Up, and Away, where we find adventure in Bruges?